Hello, I'm Ken Casty, prosecuting attorney for Saline County, the 22nd Judicial District. Methamphetamine continues to be a serious epidemic in communities across Arkansas. Methamphetamine impacts our families, is a growing problem among young people, and is largely responsible for property crime, crimes of domestic abuse, and child neglect, and many other crimes as well. That's why, with the help of local law enforcement, I have produced this video to help raise awareness among parents and educators. With your help, we can stop this epidemic. The making of meth has become a growing problem across this state. Methamphetamine use is becoming more and more frequent. Meth is a growing problem for meth lab production. Meth labs were found. Yet another meth lab. Somebody please turn the light on Somebody please turn the key One of these days I'll be walking the street These guys aren't hanging out at their local hardware store. They're meth addicts and they're looking for a fix for a bump. They can find almost everything they need right in this store. The product itself is not that difficult. Um, anybody, I'm not even gonna say about high school education can do it. Um, you're just learning a few simple chemical reactions what brings those chemical reactions about. Uh, the ingredients are readily available. Uh, grocery store, hardware store, you go out, pick up one or two items at a time, try not to draw attention to yourself. Um, you just, you do what you have to do to get the necessary supplies and it's just to maintain the high, just to keep going. Methamphetamine is a deadly and addictive drug that stimulates the central nervous system. The drug can easily be made in clandestine laboratories with supplies that can mostly be bought at the grocery store. These factors make methamphetamine a drug with high potential for widespread abuse. The primary ingredient in most meth labs is Pseudofed or generic cold tablets. In Arkansas, the punishment for manufacturing 400 grams or more of meth is a minimum sentence of 10 to 40 years or life in prison and up to a $250,000 fine. This punishment is more severe than for first degree murder, rape, kidnapping, or aggravated robbery and is the harshest in the United States. The primary ingredient in most meth labs is Sudafed or generic cold tablets. These types of medications contain an ingredient called pseudoephedrine which is broken down through several chemical reactions to produce methamphetamine. With increased uh, legislation and restrictions on pseudo, uh, pseudoephedrine sales in our prescription drug stores and things of that nature, uh, it really decreased the amount of small type illicit labs that we had in the area. Did you find everything all right? Pretty much. You don't carry cold medicine or anything like that? No, man, we sure don't. Arkansas law has changed. We don't, kind of, we don't carry that kind of stuff anymore. If you uh, want that kind of stuff, you'll need to go to a pharmacy. I've had somebody, I was so high one time, I've had somebody take me to the store to get some pills. They went into one store and I went into one store. I come back out and I get in the car. I'm sitting in the car with my bag of pills and stuff. And this guy comes out and walks up to the front of the car and he's just looking at me, scratching his head. And I'm like, well, what's your problem, you know? Finally, it dawns on me. I get out of the car and go find out where they're at, the ones that took me up here. I go find them and come back out. I'm sitting in the wrong car. I'm sitting in somebody else's car out there in front of the store. Some of the common household items used to break pseudoephedrine down include Epsom salts, ether, coffee filters, paint thinner, Freon, acetone, 
Coleman fuel, starting fluid, liquid heat, iodine or red devil lye, Drano, plastic tubing, battery acid, sulfuric acid, benzene, matchbooks, rock salt, and rubbing alcohol. You are nothing but human scum. You have no honor. Hi, my name is Deborah Pumphrey and I work for the Arkansas State Crime Lab as a forensic clandestine laboratory chemist. Right now I'm sitting in the middle of a typical meth lab that we see and I'm going to go with you through some of the different components of this meth lab. The normal consumer should not worry about the use of the chemicals used to make methamphetamine. When used as directed, these chemicals are perfectly safe, but the combinations used in making meth have reactions that are very dangerous. What you're seeing here is the extraction of pseudoephedrine tablets. Everything you use in it is either a, a deadly poison or highly flammable. Red phosphorus is a red powder found in matchbook striker plates and a necessary catalyst for the reaction. When breathed directly, it becomes a respiratory irritant. When overheated, it can convert to white phosphorus, which can explode, or it can convert to toxic phosphine gas, which can kill you. Uh, you're, you're real lucky if you don't, don't blow yourself up or uh, poison yourself. Some of the most commonly used solvents are alcohols in the form of heat and isoheat, acetone, camp fuel, propane, and ether. Ether is especially dangerous because it can explode. One quart of ether is approximately equivalent to two sticks of dynamite when in contact with an open flame. Uh, I washed some ether and what was left on top of the water that I didn't siphon off, I dumped to the sink. I've been up three or four days and these blue flames just kind of dancing out of the sink. And uh, I just, I ain't had enough sense to do anything. I might have stared at a, uh, then another time I was disposing of some fuel and uh, dumped it on a trash pile and lit it and it blew back, burnt my eyebrows off, uh, singed, singed me pretty good. Other chemicals, such as red devil lye, are highly caustic and can cause burns and blisters when contacted with the skin. When stored or mixed with acids, these chemicals can cause an explosion. Anyway, we were rolling them around in a Pyrex pan and uh, the fumes from the candle caught to the pan. And as it caught it to like six bathtubs to actually try to put it out. I had it on the stove and then it was about done. When I took it off the stove, I went to set it on the counter and I missed a ring of water from somebody's glass on the counter. And as soon as it touched that ring of water, it exploded like a bomb. It went through my shoulder and my chest, ripped my belly open. Usually at the end of a, of a cook, the individuals involved will not dispose of their waste properly, but will dispose of it in any means necessary, which could include dumping it down a toilet, a bathtub, or even on the ground outside of, of the residence. Approximately one pound of methamphetamine produced will result in six to seven pounds of chemical waste. The toxic waste produced by meth labs poison the environment. A lot of times meth cooks will store their trash for months at a time to keep from being found out. The cost of a typical cleanup is about 3000 to 7000 of your tax dollars. The toxic poisons actually penetrate the walls, wood, and carpet in a home. These homes are many times condemned because of the dangerous level of toxicity. It ran my life. Couldn't get out of bed, you know, unless I had another bump. That's all I really lived for. Getting up and gathering stuff to cook it with. And cooking it and getting rid of it. 
I'd be in the middle of a sentence and the word wouldn't come. I, I, I'd just mumble and trail off. So it's just a big vicious cycle, never ends, until it either kills you or, or puts you in prison. <laughs>